What's up guys? I wanted to make a little blue mage guide about leveling and what skills you need to get along the way for your leveling journey. I pretty much made a blue mage just so I could get like leather and alchemy goods and stuff whenever I'm in the open world. I heard that blue mage was pretty strong on the trad on myself and I'm a pretty big fan of the class. So I've already leveled mine up. I thought about making an alt one just for this guide but it just sounds like a lot of work so just bear with me, pretend I'm level 1. So I went ahead and, and teleported to Black Brush Station. It's in Central Van Lam. I think this is a pretty good little spot to start. If you go directly to your north, you'll see some level 5 mobs. These should be, should be pretty easy for you. And level 1 even. Um, you're just gonna have like some basic... Let's, I don't actually have it on me, I have it in my transmog glamour system. but. None of your gear will have like stats at level 1. You won't really need it. You can kill mobs pretty much up, up to level 30 without any kind of gear. Blue Mage is pretty strong on its own. So just make sure you summon your chocobo. I'm going to set mine to healer mode so it's not going to just one shot these mobs. And you're just going to use your, uh, your water cannon. It'll probably take like 5 or 6 shots but just keep killing mobs that are above your level. So as soon as you hit level 5, move on to like level 6 mobs, so on and so forth. Pretty easy. You should be able to get to 10 this way relatively quickly. Should take you maybe 10 or 15 minutes. Once you're feeling like you're in a pretty good spot, you'll be wanting to get another spell besides water cannon. So if you just fly across the river, keep going to the east, You'll see some sun bats. All right, so these sun bats here are gonna have a skill called one drain. So in order to learn a skill from any kind of mob, you're just gonna need to hit it, watch it do the skill, complete the cast, and then you can kill it. It's not a hundred percent success rate, but you're gonna be killing mobs in the open world for a while anyway. So it might just take you a couple tries. So what I usually would do is just watch the mob. I saw the blood drain went off. That's the skill I'm trying to get right now. So I know that both of these mobs have casted it. And normally you wouldn't be pulling more than one at a time right now. So you pretty much just let it cast a couple times, let your Jokobo heal you. I've seen blood drain three or four times now, so I should be safe to kill it. All right, so once you have learned blood drain, and you farm these mobs to like level 11, 12, somewhere around there. You're about ready to get your next skill. You can pretty much take on these toads whenever you want. But I would recommend to be maybe within four levels of them. You're probably not below level 10. But it's going to teach you a, a skill called Sticky Tongue. If you're following the, uh, the wiki page, it'll be the very first one listed by world mob level. But that one's in a fate, and I don't know how often it pops up. So I just got it at level 14. So what you want to do is just, if you're like level 1, or not level 1, but like level 10, you should be able to just aggro it by being close to it. It'll sticky tongue you in, you'll be good. But since I'm obviously not aggroing it with a level, you just want to kill one of these mobs near it, and you should automatically cast it on you. And there's your sticky tongue. So just get out of its leap whenever it casts that. And you'll be good to kill it. Alright, so after you've killed your Toxic Toad and you have Sticky Tongue, you're pretty much going to want to kill these mobs until you're around 14, 15. And then pull up the Wikipedia page, sort by world mob level, and just start getting the other spells that are around your level. Or pretty much any of the spells that you can currently learn. Um, once you get 10 spells, you're going to be able to buy a totem from a vendor, and it'll help you massively with the rest of your leveling. Um, so the ones you're going to get are Sticky Tongue, which you already have, Blood Drain, Bomb Toss, you can get that in middle, Ocasia, Phase, Ice Spikes, Acorn Bomb, Self Destruct, Final Sting, Bristle, and then Total. After learning Total Oil, you should be right at 10 spells. So water cannon. Oh, get rid of Lang Sardine, you don't have that. Blood drain, sticky tongue, toad oil, 
Bomb Toss, Phase, Ice Spikes, Self Destruct, Final Sting, and Bristle. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You should have gotten an achievement. And you can now go to. Well, duh. Da, rather. And you might have to do some other um, prerequisite quests, like from your Blue Mage main quest. Just follow that if there's some some that you can knock out. Once you make your way into the teleport to the Goldsmith Guild or the Weaver's Guild. And then check out right over here in this Milvaneth Sacrum, however you say it. You're gonna see these little guys here, these little blue dudes. You can follow in the quest. You will have seen them in the cutscenes and whatnot. I actually kind of skipped most of those. I was more interested in the open world, not so much those uh, goofy looking dudes. But regardless, talk to Wayward Gahilja. Ask him about his totems. And he'll have some that are available. You're not going to have all of these, of course, but you'll get these from learning a set amount of skills for each one. So right now you should have the Mighty Guard Totem, go ahead and buy that, and buy the White Wind Totem. They will put these little uh, consumables that you can right click inside of your uh, inventory. Just go ahead and use those to learn a skill for each one. And after that you're going to have White Wind, which is your heal, and this is a very good heal. It will heal everyone in your party equal to your health. So pretty much you want to use this whenever you're 50% health or more. Whenever you're really low health, it's not going to heal you very much at all, and you'll have to spam it. You'll go oom pretty fast, and it's really the only way you'll go oom is the blue mage in a short fight. Um, beyond that, you're also going to have Mighty Guard right here. So make sure you throw Mighty Guard and your White Wind onto your bars. Mighty Guard is going to allow you to pretty much be a tank. You're not going to be like tanky, but you'll be able to have more amnity generation. So you'll put more threat out there. And they're also not going to be able to interrupt your casts. So with Mighty Guard and Toad Oil, that you only have to reapply every three minutes, you'll be pretty tanky. At least tanky enough to get the next spell, which you're going to want to head to Southern Thanalan. So once you have Mighty Guard and your new heal, teleport over to Southern Thanalan. As soon as you're in Alamigo, go ahead and leave the gate, take a right, and you'll see some saboteurs. These are not really what you need, but if you're still like level 20, you know, not close to 25 and you need some more experience, you can kill these guys, they'll get you there. Saboteur Balior is what you want though. So make sure you put on your Mighty Guard, because this guy will do some pretty powerful melees if you're underleveled. You don't want him to interrupt your casts. And pretty much just get your Water Cannon ready. Now he's going to cast a skill called Thousand Needles, and that will carry you for most of the game until you're about level 50. So tag him in whichever way you need to, wait for him to cast. Let it go off, and you're good to kill him. This guy almost killed me two or three times. Might need some help from people around you, but when I did it, it was like three in the morning. It is what it is. Now that you know Thousand Needles, pretty sad for a long time. You're not going to need another skill until like level 38 or so. And even then, that one's just kind of for protection and luxury. So keep grinding stuff. Follow the Wikipedia. Page, get the different skills that come up. Uh, basic Instinct, Plane Cracker, Flying Sardine, Bad Breath, The Look, and Peculiar Light. At 38, you're going to get a dungeon unlocked called the Cutter's Cry. Right here. So, pretty much just whenever you're like 38, either make your own group with Blue Mages or just keep an eye out. I'm trying to find a party that meets the conditions for Cutter's Cry. You can also just wait until you're level 50 or so. But you're going to want to get um, the skill from there called Ram's Voice. So, remember level 38, Cutter's Cry is unlocked. Keep an eye out for those groups as you're farming. 
you can find a group that's great, but you can't just use the party finder. You have to find a group that's going in by itself. Just like this one for the Arm Veil. Two parties meet conditions. This guy is looking full of mage, actually. Or glower. So that's exactly what you're going to be wanting to look for. Except you're going to be looking for the Cutter's Cry. Once you've learned Thousand Needles, you're pretty much just going to want to grind mobs with that and your Sticky Tongue Rotation. One shot them as much as you can. And it's going to take a long time. This is the portion of the grind that I liked the least. But just keep at it. Use your food buffs and find mobs that are a good spot for you, depending on what your level is. So when you're around like level 30 or so, I would go to the core of the Central Highlands, teleport to Camp Dragonhead, go just slightly northeast to Witch Drop, and you'll see this little sheep everywhere. I pretty much grinded here like until level 37, I think starting around level 30. If you're around level 20-ish, you can just grind on some toads back where we were before. We'll give you toad leather. We'll need that for some crafting, like leatherworking recipes. These will be for wool. Um, so just use your sticky tongue rotation and 2,000 needles. And it'll take you 2,000 needles for each one. You'll get Caracal Skins, those are pretty much worthless, but occasionally you'll also get some Fleece. You can either use those for your own crafters, or sell them in the marketplace. Not a lot of people can grind these, I don't think. So, that's an option for you. Once you're around the same level as them, 37, you don't want to be level 38 grinding these mobs, because you won't get the chain bonuses. So you always want to grind things that are your level or above. So once you're getting close to 40, I would head over to Mordana, start getting more of your skills that are available to you there, and after that head to Northern Thanalan. Northern Thanalan is definitely where I've spent the most time grinding as Blue Mage. I probably spent, I don't know, two to four hours here, but I might have started here around level 35 or so, mainly grinding on these basilisks, basilisks here for their Two things, they give you, um, I guess it's just one thing. Kill the basilisks, go get some eyes or something like that. Turn them into basilisk whetstones for goldsmiths. You need those for some, uh, heaven sword crafting. So I killed a lot of basilisks. I don't know if I have any on me still. I don't, but... A whole bunch of those. Another thing that you're gonna see around here. And if they're not all dead, here they are. These Aramans, you'll want to kill some of these. Maybe they'll give me a drop. Nope. But those Aramans drop wings, and you can use that for... Wing glue here. This downward stuff will be later, we'll be farming. Wyvern will be farming later. So make sure you get these RMN wings while you're here grinding to level 49. Open up the map again so you can see. It's going to be just east of this Cerulean processing plant. Kill these Armands. Kill the Basilisks. There's a nice little circle here that I would follow. Kill this one. It's going to be one that spawns right here that someone's already killed. Take a right. There's one deer right here. There's one over here. One down there. And one over here again. And you just do a nice little loop. This one's part of a fate. It's not usually there. Pretty much just go around this rock. And with Thousand Easels in your rotation, you're not going to be able to overclear that, especially if you're killing his armaments on top of that. So it'll take you a while, but just keep going at it. If you're under level 40, probably don't kill these too early. They're going to give you some trouble if you miss Thousand Needles, but whenever you're comfortable, head over here and just start getting to it. If you're able to do the Cutter's Cry and you have the Ram's Voice, 
it's going to help you tremendously because you're going to be so much safer. Um, let me actually sync real quick so I don't kill these. Alright, so I level synced just to show you the rotation with the ram's voice, if you're able to get that from the cutter's cry. So, what I like to do is open up with a sticky tongue first. Immediately go into the thousand needles. Because it might take you three thousand needles at this point. Then you're going to use ram's voice immediately after that. And you should be able to get two more while he's frozen. If you need to. Do that one more time on this basilisk. And there's an arm and wing that you'll need for the wing glue. So sticky tongue, immediately into thousand needles. Because he's gonna be stunned for four seconds, she'll get most of that cast completed. Into the Ram's voice. One more thousand needles. Normally your Ram's voice won't do that much damage. So again, the reason we're able to do this right now with Mighty Guard and not be penalized by a 40% damage reduction, like damage done, is because Thousand Needles is not affected by that at all. It's only potency and stuff. So as long as most of your damage is coming from Thousand Needles, you can just keep Mighty Guard up. At a certain point, things are going to be either just like so CC'd or you'll burst them down so fast that you can take off Mighty Guard, but that won't be until you're level 50 and above. So keep grinding these mobs, go in the rotation that I described, get all your basilisks, whetstones, and your wyvern wings. Once you're level 50, I'll meet you in Heaven's Word. Congrats on making it to Heaven's Word. You definitely got the worst part of the grind behind you. You no longer have to spam thousand needles on repeat over and over and over, killing millions of basilisks and their friends. Ah. So once you made it to Heaven's Word, just take a little flight to Tailfeather, go due east. You'll see some coarser chocobos down here. There's some regular like wild chocobos too. Those aren't really what you need. These guys, you want to take a skill for this coarser chocobo. And it's easily one of the best skills in the game. Because it gives a potency of 300 whenever you have your little buddy out. Also, make sure, I never did it earlier, make sure you set this guy to attack mode. Mine's only been a healer mode, just so it's not padding my damage. Actually not being level... 50 or whatever. So make sure your guy is helping you out. But anyway, let's pull one of these Corsair Chocobos and I'll show you what skill we're going to be taking. Oh, I'm also using the wrong mouse right now. Oh, there's Choco Meteor. He's going to use it on my buddy. And he's gonna cast that a couple times in succession, probably like two or three times. If your guy gets stuck in him, he's probably gonna one shot him. Let's see. Oh, he's level 70, but mine died several times during this battle. Eventually, he'll be done casting Choco Meteor. You can kill him, take it for yourself. It's gonna look something like this. So now that you have. Choco Meteor, you're only going to need that and the Ram's Voice. Choco Meteor will do most of your damage with its potency. Ram's Voice is only just going to be to help keep you alive. If you don't already have Ram's Voice and the Dragon's Voice, and there's, there's a couple of other ones you can get, go ahead and queue for the Cutter's Cry. As long as you have Poetic Gear that's like level 50 or whatever, you should be fine. If you um, do it solo, level synced. If not, just keep trying to find a party and do it eventually. There's a couple other ways you can get it. Uh, check the wiki, wiki page and do whatever skills you need besides that along the way too. But I'm not going to show like where to get any other skills from here on out, except for one more, like way later on. Um, for the most part, you're only going to need these two abilities and they'll get you all the way to 70. So if any of them look cool and they're nearby to where you currently are, just check them out. You probably won't be able to do any A or S rank elites unless they're 10 levels below you without a group, so keep that in mind. But head to Corthia's Western Islands whenever you're ready. For the first bit of your grind, after you're level 50 and have Choco Meteor, 
go ahead and head to the Corthius Western Highlands, just south of the dungeon here. I forgot which one that is, but regardless, it's around the Corthius River, Bane Pool, that area. At 2115, you'll see some woolly yaks. These are pretty good for yak malt. You'll be using that in sour cream for cooking. Uh, that sour cream is also used in this Dalmo Gratin. I pretty much made this like all the way to 70 and turned it in for the um, left quests, rather. So kill these as much as you want to grind them. There's actually going to be two mobs you can grind in this area. And they drop pretty good amounts of yak milk. It's not the worst. These uh, wyverns up here are actually slightly worse. Or they're not wyverns, these are the... Arc... Arc... These chickens. Are we just gonna be killing? Dragon chickens. Level 51 mobs, and these are gonna be giving you leathering stuff. This is the very first leather. There's not actually that many... Um, crafts that you'll need to make with that leather, so you don't need to grind these too long. But I think they're actually used in some of the later ones, yeah. So, grind these, grind the woolly yaks, and pretty much stop here around level 53 or so. At this point, you can start going on to the next section, which will be at the Churning Mists. From the Churning Mists at Mogholm, just go a little bit to the north. This big ass rock right here. You should see some wyverns flying around. These are level 55 mobs. And you can be here for quite a while. I wouldn't actually grind these past level 55 because the next one is way more important. Next leather. But regardless, kill these as long as you want to kill them. Get your wyvern skins. And just go in a big circle around this thing. You can kill these pretty simply. Um, if you don't have flying, you don't want to fuck with these because of just, like, the weird spots that these guys are in. I don't know if it's feasible at all. But just make sure you have flying. Kill these wyverns. Once you're level 55, go to the next spot again. Quick mention on gear, because I kind of forgot to mention that. Um, I pretty much just used, like, the level 50, level 60 poetic gear. And that carried me most of the way. Since I was also doing gathering along the same time. There were a couple points where I made my own stuff, and in um, Stormblood especially, the gear is all dirt cheap. For whatever reason, I guess because they just give it out high quality for the quests. So a lot of those you can just check the marketplace and see if they're cheap and buy it yourself, but uh, gear is not too much of an issue as long as you have poetic gear to kind of get you past each bracket. So whenever... Um, Whenever you make your way to the Sea of Clouds, I went to Camp Cloud Drop, went ahead over here to like OK Gundu, and you're gonna be looking for these big giraffes. These are called Dommel, and these are great for two reasons. One, for their skin. Um, the Dommel leather is really, really good. You don't need some weird uh, like byproduct like the Wyvern leather. You need these Corthian tea leaves. Uh, those are like a gathering node that only spawn at certain hours. I usually just bought them on the marketplace because it was so much easier. But regardless, the Dommel leather is much easier to work with since you just needed to farm some dark chestnut logs, and those are available all the time. So I grinded these for probably until like level 58 or something. I might have started at level 52 because I already had Wyvern skin and all that other stuff. So these Dommel were my best friends. Um, besides the leather, you also get uh, Dammel sal Salvia, or what is it, Saliva. <laughs> so make sure you get a lot of Saliva, you get a lot of their leather, their skins turned into leather. You can stick here pretty much as long as you want. Oh, you also get Dammel Meat. Um, that's in a couple different cooking ingredients. I think that I needed that for Groton. Yeah, I did. So, these Dommel are gonna be your best friends for alchemy cooking and for leather working. 
So while you're killing these Dommel, you're also going to learn a skill from them. Make sure you don't freeze them out of it every time. Um, I think it's called Chirp. Chirp sounds right. Regardless, they're going to give you some sort of skill, and this zone is actually where you're going to get most of your skills, so refer to the Wikipedia article, get the different ones that you need, and those are just going to be kind of extra, you won't use them all too much. The only one that I actually use besides a uh, Choco Meteor from here, I'm actually going to swap to the general purpose one. Um, Sonic Boom, you'll get from like a level 69 mob, I think. It might not actually be from the zone, but again, refer to that page. And Sonic Boom, since I don't have uh, the physical variant of it, this is like my shortest cast. It's only, it's less than a second. It's very, very quick. It does a good amount of damage. Not as good as Choco Meteor, as far as potency goes, but whenever you actually need to be moving a lot, it's really good. Anywho, get the rest of your skills that are in this area, keep on killing your Dommel, and the next one we're going to go kill are the Dragons. And so this is actually back in the Churning Mists, in the same area that you were killing the Wyverns, down over here, in the Landlord Colony. These are the same level mobs that are the Dommel. The main difference is you're not going to have nearly as profitable of secondary drops, besides the Leather. So while these are really good to get for gathering, or like for your crafting goods that you're going to be making for yourself, um, they're not as great to be farming, but they are worth mentioning. If you want to farm some dragon leather, these blood dragons are right up here at the very top of the map. So by now you should be 56 or so, once you've killed enough dragons and dommel. You can either just keep on killing more of those if you want to make money, or really the only other spot you to um, the grind. It's not profitable, but it will give you the most experience by far. Teleport to uh, Helix, and once you're in Helix, pretty much just kill mobs here. None of them that I saw, like someone leave a comment down below if uh, I'm wrong, but none of these mobs really drop anything except for these lightning sprites and stuff, the elementals, but those don't really give you a lot of XP. So there's these snapper things, spinners, whatever. Um, any mob here, the owl bears, you take your pick. Whatever you can kill fast, get the chains up, they're all going to be level 59. So, whatever you want to kill, just go ahead and kill them and get yourself to level 60. It'll take you a little bit of time here, but this is not too bad. And again, if you don't want to kill these things that don't drop anything worthwhile, feel, kill to, feel free to kill Dommel and dragons as long as you want. I probably killed Dommel until 58. Um, but these are just so much faster, they probably give you twice as much experience. So, once you're level 60, I shall meet you in the next area. For your first spot in Stormblood, go ahead and check out these Lesser Gaganas. They're level 60 mobs, so you won't actually be here too long. It's in the fringes, around the striped hills. Um, these things actually kind of had terrible drop rates, so... Wouldn't actually farm here too long. Just get to level 61 on these guys, and then we'll move on to the next spot again. Up in the peaks in the last forest, there's some more level 60 mobs you can kill. These are going to be used for the um, eagle glue, I think it's called. Um, it's probably worthwhile just to buy this, but if you wanted to kill them, you can. Um, later on, you'll be down here killing true griffins, or over here rather, killing true griffins. You might want to just swing by here, kill a couple of moths. Or if you would rather kill moths instead of the, um, the Gargana for the leather, these are also an option for you. Next spot's going to be in the Ruby Sea. Teleport to Oknoro, Onokoro, and go a little west. You'll see these giant walruses. Um, for this one, you're just going to go around a rock again. So, just kill them in a circle. And these Gayuki hides are going to be used in level 63 leather working recipes. They are much better drops than the other guys were, the Gorgana. 
I haven't actually killed too many of the level 67 Gargana. I'm sure those are much better drop rates. But by the time you're killing level 67 mobs, you might as well kill stuff like worth a little bit more. At least my opinion. So kill these as long as you want, probably until around level 62. Uh, you won't be here too long quite again. Uh, there's actually one more mob that's in the Ruby Sea, I believe, that I killed for quite a while. I'm going to try and find that and I'll show you where it is. I wouldn't kill these very long, but it's worth mentioning there's some bombfish over here in the south part of the Ruby Sea. And you'll need some of those bombfish needles for making the uh, weaver needles. Or for, for your primary um, tool and weaver. They're probably super cheap in the auction house, but if you wanted just to get a couple of them. I'm sure the drop rates are not abysmal. Well, they're not that good. But kill a couple bombfish if you want. Mainly kill the Gaiuki walrus type things up to the north here. We're grinding to level 64. There's two mobs in Yangtzean. Just by uh, Namai. Namai. Yeah, that place. Uh, there's some tigers level 64. Just around this village. Really close to the Aether Stone. And there's also going to be some beetles just on the other side of it. So to the south and north side, tigers in the north, and beetles to the south. You'll be using some of these beetles and beetle glue. You also have to gather pine resin. You can kill level 60 moths, but you can probably just buy those really cheap too. Um, I would kill probably more tigers than rhino beetles. It's going to be worth a lot more. So kill some of those to level 64. And then we'll go to the next spot again, and this one will be for quite a bit. For grinding to like around 65, 66, pretty much as long as you want, this is a really good spot. Teleport to the Dawn Throne at the Asm Step. There's some mammoths here, in a pretty widespread spot, but there's plenty of mammoths for you to kill. Pretty much everywhere over here to the northeast, you'll see mammoths. And if you head over to the northwest, you'll also see these little Halgali guys. These are what I've currently been farming for the um, cloth. And you'll need this, um, these mains here. You need two of these and two Manza Siri here. Down at the southwest of the Asm Step. Oops. You can just teleport to Doro Low or fly over here from where the mammoths were. You'll see these Manza series. These guys actually get pretty good drops. Like sometimes they'll drop like nine at a time, you know? So I definitely am a fan of these. The very first one dropped five. Pretty good. Again, you'll need to kill these and also the Halagi up to the north in order to make that kind of thread. So spend as much time as you want to here. Um, I would probably start at the north like I did and then go south. And these are 66, the other ones are 65. Once you're looking to get to the next spot, we can go kill some griffins. The griffins will be level 68 mobs, I believe. And those don't have like nearly as many recipes. So it might be better to go somewhere else, but I'll go ahead and show you the griffins. For the next spot we're going to go to grinding to level 68, it's going to be the Peaks at White Rock. It's going to be just north of Alagiri. And I'm right outside the gate right now. You'll see these Kongamatos. There's some Dragonfire looking dudes. These are going to have a spell called Ultra Vibration that you're going to want to take from them. It'll help you clear lots of enemies really, really quickly by immediately executing them. After they've done the casts and you, like, you know you can kill them, this is pretty much what it'll do. It'll just one-shot anything that's frozen. So whenever you're pulling like 50 to 100 mobs in a dungeon running wall to wall and they're a lower dungeon than you, of course, you can just one shot them all without having to really worry about it. Um, while you're here, you can also kill some true griffins. These will not be used in nearly as many recipes as the mammoth madrid hide, but it's worth mentioning that there are griffins here for leather if you want to farm these a little bit. And once you're level 68, there's really only one more spot you can grind efficiently that has level 69 mobs. Um, so keep killing griffins if you want, just to make a little bit of money. Or go ahead and head to the... I believe it's called the locks. 
So for farming to 70, this is the farming rotation I did. It's in the very top of the locks in this little room right here, kind of by the tomb of King Manfred. Um, and this is just utilizing the Ultra Vibration skill that we had just unlocked. Um, I'll show... I didn't actually have any audio for it, unfortunately, but the little bit that I recorded of my um, actual grind, I got this rotation in there. But I'll show you what it looks like at level 72. It'll be a little bit cleaner than the other one. Um, so make sure your pet is set to healer stance, so it's not just attacking shit. And what you're going to do is pull this specter, immediately jump down over here, pull that specter, both of these. And if you're feeling risky, you can grip this fire sprite. This one might be too far. So you'll have a total of one, two, three, four specters, one fire sprite. They're going to be about 250k each um, experience. So you did that. So it's a good amount for like not too much effort. So we pull that one, sprint to the other side, and pull this one. Nice. As soon as they're all grouped, use your ram's voice. And then ultra break them all down. Lots of really easy experience. Those are going to take a little bit to respawn, but luckily by the time they respawn, your ultra ration will be back up. So I just went over to the other side and killed these mobs. And you can do this all the way to level 70. Once you're level 70, actually once you're level 50, you can do some quests and unlock the mass carnival. This will allow you to unlock various spells by doing some uh, tasks like some uh, trials, I guess. Some of them are kind of challenging. I haven't done really that many of them. Um, but eventually I'm going to complete them all. So I recommend at some point, probably starting level 70 just so you have such good spells, go through some of these and get some of your extra spells that you'll need to do more damage, basically. Beyond that though, at the end game, and I'll go ahead and end the video with me doing for one of these, you can also do some trials. Um, make sure you unlock them with whatever prerequisite quest you need to do. Click on Undersized Party, and I think one of the ones that I need... I still need to do this thok ass thok guy, so I'll do this one. Alright. So whenever you're in one of these dungeons, normally you'd want to have Ethereal Mimicry up, so you could be a TPS. I forgot to do that beforehand. So YOLO. You can use your Mighty Guard here, and if you have Basic Instinct unlocked, you can also use that. That will pretty much negate the uh, damage done with this. So you still do full damage, and then you'll also do a little bit more damage. 100% more. So more than a little bit. You're also fast. Very, very strong.
So I've done this guy a couple times, still need his ability. Basically, he does all of his bullshit at the very end. And then he'll start casting, um... Serponaka? Something like that. So I just get him low, wait for him to cast a couple times, then go on. And... Did I get it? That's the ability I want, Serpukana. And I didn't get it, but that's the way it goes.